Hi guys and welcome to my first editing video ever. We're gonna take this image and make it look like this and I'm gonna walk you through the whole process so that you learn how I do it. It's not going to be the only way how to do it. There are hundreds of thousands of way of editing images, but it's going to be my way for this specific image to make it look a bit more vivid and saturated. So one of the first problems that I actually encountered in this was how to do a screen recording on my on my Apple computer. I did not know what application to use because I've never done that before, but I browsed online and I saw that there was a possibility to use the QuickTime application that is actually shipped with my MacBook Pro and my Apple computer. So I didn't have to pay any extra money for any separate application and that was really good. So the first application that I start my editing in is the Sony Imaging Edge. And the reason why I'm using this application is that Lightroom and Photoshop Camera Raw does not have support for the Sony a7R 5 yet. They will have support, I'm not sure when, but they will. And it's gonna be really good because this workflow isn't really smooth. So I, I look forward for, for the Camera Raw support in Lightroom and Photoshop. It's gonna be so much easier to to do a conversion of your raw files from the Sony a7R 5 and use that in a better way than I have to do now because this is really, really cumbersome to get through. But let's dig into the depths of my editing and let's start by going into Sony Imaging Edge. So if you look at the image properties up in the left corner, you can see that the the camera that I used is a Sony a7R 5 and the lens that I shot with is a 50 millimeter 1.2 GM lens. I did shoot at obviously 50 millimeters since it's a fixed lens and I had a shutter speed of eight seconds to be able to kind of like uh, get light trails down here on the road that you see on the right corner. And I also did have a, an aperture of f16 and I did that on ISO 100 and the reason why I had f16 was to make the light trails so the opposite of freezing the moment so uh, let's start with the first thing that we need to do with the image here and as you see it's fairly dull because it was shot in camera neutral the creative look neutral and it's kind of raw um, so the first thing that I'm going to do here is lowering the brightness I'm going to lower it by actually one stop and I can do that by lowering the brightness up here in the right corner. I am going to choose a different white balance. I'm going to choose a color temperature which is 5500 kelvins which makes this image a bit more blue than it was before and if you see here the creative look is at the moment on the camera setting which I believe was neutral but if I set it to vivid you're going to see a big change in the image. It's going to be a, a lot more vivid, you're gonna see some saturation and the light trails are being a bit more prominent here than they were before. So now we have an image that you can export in TIFF 16-bit to Lightroom where we can continue the edit and do this image a bit better. So let's do that by actually clicking here and export this to the desktop in 16-bit TIFF, save, and then we'll open it in Lightroom. So I now have the two images open in Lightroom. The one to the right is the one that isn't changed in Imaging Edit, and the one to the left is the one that I actually did some changes on. So this is what we're going to work with going forward. This image to the right is only for comparison reasons, and we're gonna look back on that image when we're ready to see the difference. So let's start with this and we'll go into the development module and as you can see the image isn't straight so we need to do something about that immediately and the thing that we're going to do is just clicking this crop and straighten tool and just press auto and then we have a straight image just press enter and then it's fairly straight so we're going to work with this Going forward, we need to do some changes to the color temperature. I need this image to be a bit warmer, so I'm going to increase the, sorry, I'm not going to increase this exposure. I'm going to increase the color temperature and that is going to be around 20 or something. I think that's okay. And also increase the tint to do it a bit more magenta. Around 18-19 is a good way to start. So we're also going to do some exposure adjustments. I'm going to increase the exposure a little bit, 
I'm going to lower the highlights, increase the shadows to around 30. I'm going to lower the whites a bit to around 36 and the blacks, I'm going to increase them to make them a bit more bright. The clarity, we're going to do some changes to the clarity and I think that we're going to end up around maybe 25, 24 is a good number. The vibrance and the saturation, we're not going to do much about that at the moment because it's going to change while we do some changes in the tone curves and the calibration. So if we start with the tone curve first, we'll start with a slight S curve on the blue channel to increase the highlights, the blue in the highlights and to decrease the blue in the, in the shadows, somewhere around there. Just also let's try a slight S curve on the green channel and also on the red channel. We'll increase the red in the highlights and do a decrease of the red in the shadows and also see if we can do that on the main channel, a slight increase in the contrast by adding a bit to the highlights, raising that and also lowering the shadows. So this is before and this is after. So it's quite a uh, dramatic change uh, as you can see. So if we continue down to the calibration, I'm going to do a, a bit of changes here as well. Let's try out maybe lowering the magenta in the shadows to somewhere around three is good. The primaries red is going to be a bit more towards the orange. I want it around maybe 16, 7 is good and also increase the saturation. As you can see, the trails of the light here is increasing if we increase the saturation and that is what we want. So let's go to somewhere around 30. The green primaries is going to be a bit more, a bit more around 28 and the saturation, we're going to lower that by like 11. Blue primaries, Let's set that to minus five and that's going to give the effect of a more teal blue. So maybe around minus five is good. And the saturation, let's lower that to minus 10. Uh, the thing that we need to do now is add a slight vignette to the image, which is going to be somewhere around 20 the midpoint let's keep that around 50 maybe 45 and i think that we have a good a good start here i do want to lower the brightness in the sky a bit and to do that i'm going to add a mask so i'll go up to the mask tool here and i'm not going to use a, a new uh, smart mask or whatever it's called i'm going to use a liner gradient here so I'm just pushing the liner gradient and I'm dragging that down over the sky to somewhere around here. And I'm also going to lower the exposure and maybe push that a bit down in the image like that. So I think that we have something that we can compare it to the original by going back to the library module and select this image and this image and view them side by side. So as you can see, this is what we started with to, to the left and this is what we ended up with to the right. The difference is quite dramatic and I'm now going to export this and make it a bit more sharp uh, while exporting it so that you can see it in its full glory on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you learned something today as, as I told you, it's not the only way how to edit images, but it's my way of doing it for this specific image. If you did learn something today or felt the slightest inspiration to go out and take images and edit them, I would love if you gave this video a thumbs up, maybe even hit the notification bell and consider commenting. And if you did subscribe to my channel, that would be epic for me. I would love that. 
and I wish you a really good evening and thank you very much for watching.